this is Romy here and welcome back to our life wedding DLC. We are here in the car after having talked to Baxter about our wedding plans. The pop and subsequent click from the subsequent click from the opening and closing of car doors played out in sync between you and Cove. As they buckled in for the ride back, Cove commented on the experience. The sentence was hesitant and had an upward bend that made it sound like a question. So that went well. Before you could respond to the not exactly a question statement, Co continued on with the new actual question. I mean, we got Baxter Ward as our planner somehow, but he seems good at what he does, right? He put his hands on the wheel and peeked at you through the reflection in the overhead mirror. Right, Baxter will do wonderfully. I just hope he doesn't suggest a monochrome color scheme, he joked. He's absolutely the guy for the job. I don't know. As long as he's grown out of hating on both of us, it should be fine, he teased. You didn't have an answer for him? Um... Uh, he's absolutely the guy for the job. You're right. Cove had pulled out of the parking lot as he spoke. The wheels rumbled easily down the newly developed city sh city streets of the area. But that was but that was the end of Cove's attempt at conversation making. He went entirely quiet. The pensive look on his face didn't allow you to relax into a normal, comfortable silence. Cove, what's up? His boot easily lifted back up the, at the sound of his name. Forgetting all the the Baxter stuff, I'm just really happy we're doing this. Sometimes I still can't believe we're together, we're engaged, and soon we're gonna be married. It's incredible, and it never stops feeling like that. I don't think I'll ever be used to it, not really. Oh, I love you, I feel the same way about it, it's like living an incredible dream, you put your hand on his shoulder, it felt relieved he was okay and settled it. No, just feel like I love you, bro. I love you. His cheeks squished at his eyes from the size of his grin. Size of his grin. Nothing could stop him from looking forward to the upcoming occasion. Finally, the lack of words felt right between the two of you. You took the chance to let the day sink in as best as you could. After all the years you had known Cove, you now were going to have a wedding with him. The scenery slipped by faster than your eyes could keep up, a cup, keep up with as you got further and further into your own thoughts. And suddenly the day had ended and you were drifting off to sleep in Cove's arms. It was early afternoon when you stepped outside, breathing in the good weather. The gentle breeze warmed your skin while you waited for Cove. He wasn't far behind, but there was still a serene moment to watch the puffy white clouds move across the sky. You were grateful for that because the second you both hopped into Cove's car, you, your brain was filled to the brim with wedding planning once again. Before you could progress any further, you need to cross one of the most important details off the list, officially putting the wedding party together. This was a goal for today. Despite the nervousness, uh, nervous energy fluttering your stomach, you were already anticipating the stops and phone calls planned. Peeking over at Cove, you hoped he was too. Are you okay? Oh. I have high hopes for today, and that's scary, but otherwise I'm okay. What about you? Cove turned away while his eyebrows pinched together. His grip on the steering wheel tightened briefly before he made himself relax at the stiffness in his pose. Tense, but good. Better than good, really. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to see their reactions. Every time you imagine the conversations you would have today, they all boil down to the same joy, same feeling. Joy. The people you picked were all important figures in your lives, and you just couldn't wait to see how they would take the news. Cove nodded at a happy hum in a response, and with that, you were on the road home. Naturally, Cove navigated the car towards the old neighborhood. It was soothing, winding down the familiar paths of your childhood. You spent so many years expanding your little your world little by little on foot, and then by car. The older you grew, the further you went, but there was always a place back there for you. Cove parked along the upper end of the street. Side by side, you headed out, aiming for his dad's condo. Your first visit for the day, Cove wanted to ask his father to be his best man, and you'd be there for him. <gasps> Exciting! Cove's nearly outstretched hand was halfway to the door now when he paused uncharacteristically. Actually, I'm gonna knock. What? Why, all, why now all of a sudden? Because this is a serious business, and he'll be so happy to see us that he won't see the real surprise coming. Well, I think he'll love that. The warmth intensified in Cove's expression. His hand changed direction, and he gave the door two firm knocks. It didn't take Mr. Holden long to answer the door. His initial shock quickly melted into a cheery grin. Come on. Hey, come in, come in! He saw. His attention bounced back and forth between you and Cove as he moved aside to let you stroll on in. Man, Mr. Holden! So hot as ever. Hey, Dad. How are you? You're great. Nice. Is this... Is that a shark or a dolphin? I think these are sharks on his shirt with jellyfish. Cool. Well, uh... <laughs> 
Uncle stood bashfully staring down at his feet and rubbing the back of his neck. He knew just how important this was to him. He took a deep breath and didn't wilt under his dad's growing concern. So? And Chico and I were talking about the wedding, and I realized that I need to ask you about something. I'm all your son, whatever you need, I'm your guy. Cosuelo nervously nodded, then the corners of his mouth started to perk up. I was wondering if you might be alright, be my best man in the wedding party. Aww. Mr. Honus slammed a hand <laughs> slammed a hand to his chest, clutching his heart. He waited for any kind of sign of life. A part of you wasn't even sure if he was breathing until he finally gasped in a lungful of air. Are you sure? Cove? You don't have to do that. Cove's brows been up, but his delicate smile grew wider. Nobody's forcing me. This is what I want. That's... Dad, you've always supported me. Through the good and the bad. For my whole life, you've taken care of me. His expression was earnest as he stepped forward. His chest swelled with pride, listening to Coe's honest plea. Why would I want somebody else to be a best man? Completely touched and because I stole Derek, so... <laughs> Completely touched, Mr. Honan grasped his son by the shoulders and then wrapped him in a hug. Cove embraced him just as tightly and rested a cheek on his dad. There's nothing in this world that would stop me from being there for my boy. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Sniffling Cove's voice came out softly and laden with emotion. With teary eyes, Mr. Holden invitingly reached an arm out to you. You joined them, you declined. No, hell yeah. Hugs. That simple invitation instantly had your vision cloud tears. The Holdens felt like family to you. And right now, it really settled in how much all of you are now without a question. Family. And June forward, you'll let yourself be pulled into their loving embrace. You clung onto them both. Finally, Mr. Holden pulled back, letting his shaking form settle again. Well, I'm sure you're both busy, so I won't keep you. Mr. Hoden crossed his arms, despite the misty eyes he beamed taking in the sight of you and Cove. But I really appreciate you both coming by, and I'm around if either of you ever need anything. Thanks, and yeah, we need to invite the rest of the wedding party before we see the wedding planner later. You're our very first stop today. Mr. Hoden managed to brighten even more hearing that. Cove shyly nodded and rubbed his arm. Nice work. Very well. Or first, not very well, oh my god. Very good. You're being so responsible. I want to hold, up, hold you up on your way. Thanks. Um, again. I guess we're on to the next stop. Glance over at Cove. You nodded surely and you felt a calming surge of confidence. Have fun spreading the good news. We will. Bye, Dad. See you soon. The sun was warming your skin as you left Mr. Horton's house. Stretching your arms overhead, you pivoted to Cove. You're feeling refreshed. Ready? Come on. Yep, let's go. Your lips twist into his hazing grin. Cove arched an eyebrow. You think we'll need to hike back to the car for this pearl pearliest trek? Across the street? It's a dangerous journey, I'm told. Cove snorted and shook his head. The effort he was exerting not to laugh made you snicker. You couldn't have you couldn't have been more pleased with your life. Stepping up to the condo, you rang the doorbell and waited. The longer you stood there, the stranger you felt. Because it still felt like your own door. The expression on your face pinched together oddly, but it was short lived as your ma swung the door open and validated your thoughts. Hello. Oh sweeties, welcome home. She eagerly ushered you both inside towards the living room. Ma then went over to the hall and cupped a hand to the side of her mouth to be heard in the other room. Pam, come see our guest! Mom curiously peeked out the bedroom door. When she realized who it was, she peeped and gave you a little wave. Hey, kiddos! Hi! Hi, I missed you both! Aw, oh, my moms, they're getting old! Your mom's expression softened. Mom joined you all in the living room, standing alongside Mom. How are you? What can we do for you today? We've been working on some wedding preparations, and we were hoping to include you in that. Oh, I wonder what that could mean. Ma raised an amused eyebrow and then turned to Mom. Shyly, Cope glanced at you, wordlessly asking for you to take the lead here. Mom and Mom, would either of you want to be part of our wedding? Cove and I were hoping that Mom would be a bridesmaid, and Mom would also be a bridesmaid for me. Of course. Ma excitedly looked from you to Mom, and then back again. She was thrilled. If you want me as a bridesmaid, then I will be. All I want is to be there for my wonderful ch child's very special day. Mom stepped forward and put her hands on her hips. She beamed proudly. You bet, Michiko. Whatever you need, because out of all my kids, you you're, you're tied for first place. You shook your head, maintaining eye contact and pressing your lips together a fine line. That only sent your mom into a lot of louder giggles, amused with her own joke. Teasing aside, Michiko, you made me very happy. I can't yawn, I'm sorry. A small release sigh took away the remaining worries twisted in your gut. Twisting in your gut. That went even better than you thought it would. A silly, sh sweet grin spread ear to ear on Mom as she swayed gently where she stood. She picked up Mom. <laughs> nice. I can't believe it. I'm the same party as Nol Nolani. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Hello, miss. It's so nice to see you here. How long have you been at this lovely party? Mom placed a hand over her heart as she spoke. They both had pink cheeks from laughter, pretending they're hanging out together at an actual event. Everything was so much sweeter knowing that your moms were thoroughly enjoying this. Spy on Cove, out of the corner of your eye, you caught the fondness he exuded watching you return. You seemed just as pleased with your mom's reactions. In that case. Okay, well, we'll let the two of you go about the rest of your planning. Thank you so much for surprising us with this. Mom brushed back her hair, observing you both affectionately. Mom nodded in agreement. You've got a lot to do, but I'm sure you'll be able to hack it. Hack it? Raising an eyebrow, you put your hands on your hips. Cove grinned, already amused with where your train of thought was going. We're going to knock it out of park with flying colors. We're going to put together the best wedding anyone has ever seen. You know what, Michiko? I believe you. You're always amazing. Thanks. We'll be back around soon, I'm sure. Yeah. We appreciate it so much. Tipsy Cove's ears were red, but he did his best to be unruffled under your mom's stairs. He nodded with a warm smile. Bye. Goodbye. See you around. After that, your mom's walked you to the door. You and Co stepped down to the neighborhood, ready to tackle the next task on your to-do list. With one last glance around the neighborhood, you suddenly said goodbye. There was so much more to do today that would require hitting the road again. Humming to yourself, you watch Cove bring the car towards the city. Your next visit will be to meet with Terry and Miranda in their neck of the woods. You couldn't wait. You did tell them in advance that the wedding plan was bringing you and Cove out that way, so your friends were expecting you today. But as far as you knew, they didn't have any idea what you were preparing to ask. Pulling into the parking lot along the street, Cove was in high spirits. He eagerly hopped out of the car and you caught up to him with light steps. You weren't that far away from the car when you heard familiar friendly shouts nearby. You spotted Terry and Miranda running along the brick path to meet you and Cove halfway. Hey buddies. Aw, oh, they all look like such a gang. <laughs> Ah, it's so good to see you! Randy, Terry! You dart over in their direction, chuckling. It was Cove's turn to hurry back to your side and give your friends a wide wave when he caught up. I missed you two. Hey, thanks for coming down. Meet you gonna have something to talk to you about, and it's really nice to be able to do it in person. Neither of them dared to interrupt, but Terry and Miranda did share a silent look. They both seemed eager to know the details. <laughs> look at her, like, facial expression here. Terry, could you be a groom's fan of my wedding party? Finally! Yes! I made the cut! Thoroughly he threw a satisfied fist in the air. Terry's grin stretched ear to ear. Does that mean you accept? You laugh? Don't act too surprised now. I think that's a good sign. I think I'll probably laugh. You're generally relieved by Terry's reaction. Having second thoughts already? No. Good. I'm a groomsman and you can't take it back. It's set in stone. I mean... We could take it back. No. Coe snickered, leaning towards you. And then Coe's attention moved to Randy. You watched her eagerly in anticipation. Miranda, it'd be great if you would be a groomswoman at my party. Her eyes darted from Coe to you to Terry, and then back to Coe again, before she believed that this was all actually happening. Thanks. Yeah, I accept. Thank you so much. That would be wonderful. Terry cheered again, pulling Miranda in for a one-arm side hug. Coe put a hand to his chest and let out a small sigh of relief. Go Team Cove! Yeah. Team Cove forever. Hey! Michiko's party is just as good. I'm marrying Michiko, remember? We like her. <laughs> go team Go! Go team Michiko. I think we're all one big team. My party is 1,000 times better than Cove's. Oh no, putting them together in the same party was a mistake. You shook your head at their antics. Um, Let's just be playful and say go team Cove. You cheerily move your hand like you were waving a flag. That got a hearty laugh out of both Terry and Miranda. Team Michiko and Cove's wedding forever. Terry put his hands on his hips and nodded sagely. That's the truth, Randy. Seriously, thanks for this. Yep, yep. It's super nice to include us in the wedding parties. Of course. We couldn't imagine the wedding any other way. That would be, yeah, that would be weird if we didn't invite both of them. Thanks for meeting up with us today. It's nothing, but you'll probably have to get going now, huh? Yeah, we have a meeting with the wedding plan pretty soon. The back smacks. With a curt shake of the head, Cove wrote his eyes, completely unamused. Miranda's brow furrowed. Oh. Wait, I thought you were joking when you mentioned that. Is he really planning your wedding? He is. Wow. No, wow. Preposterous. I remember when we were all here watching free binge, free binge, <laughs> free range fireworks, and now you two are getting married, and Baxter's the one planning it. Preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely something, but that's what we're doing, and we're gonna go do it now. Cove awkwardly rubbed his arm, understanding. Terry gave a thumbs up. Safe travels. Bye. Have fun. Next time you see us, we'll have more wedding planning, so be ready. Bye. Terry and Miranda remained on the walkway while you and Cove returned to the car. When you were alone again, you spoke up. That was good. Yeah. 
He wasn't facing you, but you could still admire the happy curve of his lips. It was nice to visit with, your, visit with your friends for a while, for a little while. And it was even better to have another thing set for the big day. The chairman Sterico pulled his phone, and phone out and plugged Baxter's office into the GPS map. Once it was all set, he put the car in drive and you both were on your way once more. While Cove drove, you pulled your phone out and scrolled through your contact list. The rest of this task would have to be done long distance, so you turned the speaker up to the call. Dialing up your big sister, you set the phone to speaker. You're already expecting the inevitable jokes she'd have up her non-sleeves. Hello, Michiko. What do you need to inform me of? How do you do, Liz? Oh, hi, Cove. This is gonna be good. Liz's intrigued tone became teasing, realizing she was on speaker. I, just, I guess you can't even pretend to have a normal conversation first. You're planning a wedding. You have to have something in the works by now. You could tell by the way Cove quietly took a deep breath that he was conflicted. In your gut, you knew he wanted to admonish her and shake his head, but she wouldn't see that. It's always nice to talk to you, Liz. But let's cut to the chase. She's right, Cove. So glad my big sis is on the ball. You wrote your eyes. You laughed. I think it would laugh. Your sister was a woman on a mission. Underneath her eagerness, you knew she was ready to fight for anything you truly wanted. And? Cove and I were hoping that you'd be a bridesmaid for me. I knew it. The only reason you both would be calling like this would be to ask something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're very clever for cracking the case. That's correct. It makes us, it makes sense. And of course, you'd request me to be involved with the wedding. I was cracked up over the line. She needed some time to collect herself, but when she did, she spoke much more earnestly this time. But that aside, honestly, I'd love to be your bridesmaid. Thank you so much for having me. I wish we could have done this in person. Thanks, Liz. I know, I won't let you down, little sister. I'm glad that you're going to be part of this too, Liz. It's natural that you would be. You've been there all along, for better and worse. Rude. But fair, I'm looking forward to it. We gotta go and do more wedding things. Talk to you later. Keep me updated. Bye. Bye, Liz. And with that, you could happily check another box off your to-do list. That was another invitation sent and accepted. Taking a deep breath, you pulled up the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. Eagerly, you waited for your cousin to pick up. Cove noticed out of the corner of his eye that you positioned the phone a little further away than normal. He nodded and agreed with that decision. Hi! <laughs> hey, Michiko! How's the wedding planning going? Any news? Here we go. Despite his amused tone, Cove still held the wheel more tightly, bracing for the volume of the oncoming conversation. Lee was clearly already excited for any potential scoop. Oh, was that Cove? Hi! Hi, Lee. She uncharacteristically remained silent after the greetings, waiting patiently for what, what this was about. Hey, Lee, can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. Will you be a bridesmaid at my wedding party? Really? Chuckling, you could feel Ko's affectionate gaze on your skin. It was easy for you both to imagine the way Lee must have been vibrating with the wedding energy as she let her enthusiasm spill out loudly over the phone. Lee's cheering was exactly what you wanted to hear. Eventually, she called an end to her mini celebration when she was forced to pause to take a deep breath. You leaned over and spoke out of the side of your mouth towards Ko. That was definitely a yes. Sounded like one to me, too. Totally yes! I'm in! You know I am. Okay. I'm still st just stunned about everything. My cousin is getting married. This is gonna be so amazing. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate the support. That's what family is for. I'm always just a phone call away. Thanks, Lee. We have some more winning related things to do, so we'll pick things up this up again later. Works for me. Good luck with the planning, and I expect a detailed report face to face soon. Of course. Bye, Lee. Bye, Michiko. Bye. I'm still here. I'd never forget you. Bye. <laughs> And it was just you hung up already, uh, awaiting the next time you'd see Lee in person. Stretching your arms out, you pleasantly look in look took in the world rolling up by out the window. Taking a deep breath, you pulled out the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. Staring at Kara's name, you hoped that she wasn't too busy. She luckily picked up only after a couple rings. Hello, Michiko, and hello, baby. Hi, Kyra. Huh? Hi, Mom. How'd you know I was here? Come on. Why are you ever far from... <laughs> When are you ever far from me, Chico? Especially with what's been happening lately. Oh, yeah. How are my best kids doing? Good. Really good. Um, Chico and I actually have something we wanted to ask you. Oh, I'm all ears. I was hoping that you'd be a groomswoman at my wedding party. My baby. My heart. Oh, yes, of course I'll be your groomswoman. You can count on me. I'm so glad. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey, that's what I'm here for. We have to keep going with more planning, but we'll talk to you later, okay? Makes sense. Good luck, my babies, and take care. I'll see you both again soon. Thanks again. Bye. Bye, Mom. Ko was elated when you ended the call. One more successful invitation was checked off the to-do list. Taking a deep breath, you pulled up the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. You didn't have to hover over Derek's name. You hit call without another thought. He picked up the second... Oh! The second ring. 
Homie loves. Uh, homie knows I love the number two. What's up? Hey, it's Derek. How's it going? Hi, everything is great. Hey, Combs there too. Talking and Derek always raise his spirit to chuckle and watching Coz grin widen. Hey, two and Coz, right? Things are good. Awesome. Did you both need to talk to me about something specific, or is this just for fun? <laughs> yeah, about that. Co trolled off so that you could pick the conversation up. I wanted to ask you if you'd be my man of honor. No way. Your man of honor? You want me for that? Yeah? I know you can do it. There's no one else I'd want, th want in this position. Come on, it'll be fun. Well, you, you're al you've are you always been the most responsible one in our friend group. I hope that's all right. Uh, let me save real quick because I haven't done that. Um, there's no one else I'd want in this position. You hope that he could hear the sincere sincerity in your voice because you meant it wholeheartedly. Out of all the possibilities you considered, this felt the most right. Can you imagine this love story here? This love triangle story here? Oh, you know how Derek waited for us for so long, but then he couldn't get the girl because the girl was already madly in love with her other childhood friend. And then said childhood friend and the girl he loves are getting married. And she asked him to be the man of honor. And he's like still not like moved on from the heartbreak. That would be such a sad love story. It would mean everything to me if you'd be my man of honor. There was still silence on Derek's end and you couldn't help but give Cove a look. But then there was a clear inhale and you realized the stun of your question must have worn off. Hell yeah! Of course I'll do it, absolutely. Leave it to me. If you want to rely on me for this, then I will be the greatest man of honor you'll ever have. And that's a fact since it's not like you'll be getting married again. I'm the only man of honor. Cove huffed a tiny laugh at that. Yeah, I hope this is the only time Michiko will get married to somebody, unless it's me again for a second wedding. You could hear Derek snick snickering again over the line, but he soon settled down. Your cheeks were starting to hurt from smiling so much. Seriously, congrats again, you two. It means a lot to me that I'll get to be there with you through this. Thanks for being there, Derek. I don't think we can thank you enough for all this. You were pretty sure that you had knocked him speechless. All you could hear over the line were some sniffles. You both felt fortunate to have such a good friend, Derek. Cook glanced at you with eyes full of affection before moving things along. So that's what we were calling about, and now there's even more wedding planning to get to. You. Well, I won't keep you. I'm glad you called. See you later. Yeah, you will. Bye. Bye, Derek. Bye. Leaning back in a chair, you finally put your phone away and slid your attention towards Cove with an easy smile. The high excitement was fading, leaving comfortable tiredness in its place, but you wouldn't trade the joy and support you got today for anything. Cove gave a little cheer over your mutual success. Yeah. We did it! We have wedding parties! Cove didn't take his focus off of, off of the road, but you could hear every bit of relief in his voice. The corner of his mouth curved. I mean, I guess it's not exactly surprising that things went fine, but it's hard to act casual about any of this. I know how you feel, it matters as much to me too. I can't believe it's happening, it's okay to lighten up, you know? Well, you wouldn't be cool if you weren't panicking just a little. You put a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Uh, put a hand. Cause my girl has been talking non-stop right now. Cause stole a quick glance at you sweetly. You didn't have to say a single word because you both knew how much you shared this sentiment. This was a big and exciting deal and you couldn't be happier to have Cove to share this with. The tension in his body slipped away under your touch. Okay, let's hurry to Baxter's office. There's a whole rest of a wedding to plan for. Right. And this is where I'm stopping for today's episode because I'm feeling my throat hurt. And I feel like it's a good segment of just us inviting everyone to our parties. Uh, I'm really hoping Jeremy's going to be at a wedding because I want to see him again. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I will see you guys in the next one.